Praise the Lord. Hope you can hear me. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for uh, inviting uh, to share about the uh, mission that I am involved in. Just uh, as a way of introduction and to give a little uh, background information, I would like to uh, say a few things. I hail uh, from the southern tip of India, uh, from a state called Kerala, where just now you prayed for uh, Sijimol and children. I am from the same state there. Uh, Kerala is a state where the disciple Thomas came with the gospel back in AD 60. As a result of the work done by disciple Thomas, Kerala has a fair number of Christians compared to other states in India. By Christians, I do not mean evangelical Christians. Through the years, the Hindu culture and traditions of India got mixed with the Christianity and gave birth to a watered down Christianity. So many Christians in Kerala are just namesake Christians with the Christian names, but with no idea of what Jesus did for them at the cross. So much so that anyone who stepped out of the system and obeyed the Lord and got baptized were persecuted by their own family members. My grandparents ran away from their own hometown in the early 1900s to escape persecution from their family and had their house burned down for obeying the Lord in the waters of baptism. I was born and raised in Kerala and reached Canada only just 10 years back. Yesterday was the, my, the 10th anniversary that I first came to Canada. I landed here in Toronto, um, November 24th, 2011. So just now I finished uh, 10 years. Our family was involved with the evangelical work since many years now. The gospel to the poor should always be done in a language they understand. And that language is charity. We ran a children's home to shelter the destitute children and those facing abuse where they received food, safe shelter, and education. We also help those not in our children's home by sponsoring their education and supporting their families with the essential groceries for the month. This Mercy Home I started, my dad started in the year 20, uh, 2001, just now around 20 years before. He had his vision to help, to give the education, proper food, daily Bible lessons to these kids. For the last 20 years, God has sustained us God has helped us to provide these kids with this kind of education, food, and all the shelter. As you can see now in the picture, Anil and Alexander, they were studying with us for many years. And in 2004, as we all know, that the tsunami happened and they tsunami destroyed their house. The picture that you're right now seeing 
is they are standing just outside of their huts where their parents have stayed in the tsunami. They were at our mercy home. They studied and they graduated from high school. They were fishermen. After graduating, this dear child, Anil, he got a job in the year 2011 and he constructed this beautiful house for their parents and their, their siblings. He, he was God, God able to, God helped him to construct a brick and concrete house with electricity and all other facilities. Like that many other children, many children who were with us in this nursing home. Another child name is Jayagumar. He was a young Hindu, Hindu boy abandoned by his father. He came to the mercy home at the age of nine and graduated from high school. And today, you know, from the Hindu background, he left everything. Today, he is a strong believer in Christ. And he graduated from high school and got the uh, education. And now he is helping his disabled mother and he is coming to church regularly. As you can see, he received Christ in his heart at 18 years of age. Today he is around 27 years. Please pray for this dear gentleman as he is seeking for a life partner. This, this kind of many testimonies that I can share with you from our mercy home for last 20 years. Many, many children who stayed with us, who had the education, who had the shelter, abandoned kids, God sent to us our place and they got all these benefits for the kingdom of God. Every year before the school reopening, we do a back to school material distribution. As you can see in the scripture, uh, in these pictures, they'll get all kind of resources to stay in, in, in the school. A bag, pen, pencils, books, a lot of infrastructures every year before the school year starts, we do this for the kids who are not able to buy these things to go to school. God is helping us for last many years to do this kind of charity through our mercy home to the different kids. During the pandemic, as we know, for last 20 months, many families suffered without even basic necessities when the government declared a complete lockdown without any prior warning. By God's grace, we ran a pandemic aid program of supporting almost 200 families with the groceries, medicines, and other essentials. Till now, most of the schools in India, they have the online classes, not at open fully. So the kids are studying from home. So especially pray for this mercy home in the past. Broke you Bible Chapel, dear believers, helped us to give, to nurture these kids for the glory of God. Another ministry that we do in India is ambulance. That's a recent project last year will be launched. I would like to shed some light on this as the understanding of ambulance service in Canada is very different. The ambulance services in India are not free of cost. And many a times patients are exploited and ends up paying enormous amounts. Patients and elderly, and elderly people sometimes end up using public transport to reach the point of care, which is sometimes many kilometers away. That kind of situations was not ideal. In the past, we have personally helped carrying in many, many medical needs to hospitals. Now, we prayerfully decided last year 
to buy an ambulance for helping the downtrodden people, destitute people who are not able to afford the high cost of this ambulance. And God helped us to bought an ambulance last year. And uh, uh, right now we are using it for free of charge, free of charge. So the patients can use this ambulance to go to hospital and come back. And another matter is that there are no funeral home services in India and ambulances are used to carry dead bodies. By God's grace, we are using this ambulance to carry dead bodies to the burial site as well. And this is the summary of our mercy home and this ministry back in India. And coming to our work in Canada, as um, the chairman mentioned uh, in the beginning about the work in Canada and different parts of uh, Toronto that we are doing is, uh, I was involved with the Lord's work from a very young age, along with my father, who is a full-time worker. I a desire to involve in evangelical work was something that I always carried in my heart. In the year 2014, I stepped down from my secular job as social worker and served the Lord full time in various capacities in Canada. For the past six years, we have been involved in literature ministry here in Canada and in the US. What we intended through literature evangelism is to collect used Christian literature like Bibles, books, and other biblical study materials. We collect these materials from individuals and churches in Canada and send it to those in need of Bibles and biblical study materials in other countries like India, Myanmar, Philippines, different, different countries. In these countries, we know that quality Christian literature is a prized possession to a student of the Bible in many third world countries. We as a family, we were able to visit the Bible seminary, which received a shipment of theological books in Myanmar in the year 2019. As we know that now Myanmar is under a military coup now. It was so heartening to see how God continues what is surplus for us as a blessing to someone across the globe. How God continues to use what is surplus for us as a blessing to someone across the globe. Do you know the materials we collected from individuals and other places who, who donate their books to us? We sort the books, we pack it and ship to other countries where they can use these books by Bible, col Bible college students, evangelists, and pastors, and so on. This ministry has been a great blessing to many in their spiritual life. Another ministry that we carry in Toronto in the different parts of GTA is that gospel through street outreach. As you can see in the picture, the below picture, this is my wife, Shubha. We did this, uh, we started this outreach ministry, uh, street outreach in 2015, when I stepped down from my secular work for the full-time work of gospel. As you can see here, we go to a busy intersection and preach the word of God as a team. We go as a team to the intersection, sing songs, distribute gospel tracts, preach the word of God, and present the gospel there. We also do door-to-door -door evangelism during Christmas season and different occasions. 
Moreover, we procure and source gospel tracts, booklets, and other evangelization materials to other gospel workers who carry out outreach work. Dear believers at Brockview Bible Chapel, we know that the statistics says that Toronto right now is home to around 165 different language speaking people from across the globe. There is a need to proclaim the gospel to all of the new immigrants for the Lord is bringing the whole world to our, to our doorstep. We get a request for a foreign language Bible fairly often and we were able to source different language Bibles in our resource center like Hindi, Punjabi, Arabic, Parsi Bible, Urdu, and so many other languages, not just to Toronto, but also to British Columbia, Nova Scotia, and so on. God is enabling us to send this kind of Bibles and literature to many parts of the world. All these activities had its base at our home all these years. Our living room had boxes of Bibles and books stacked up, and it is there where we used to sort and plan these materials. Carrying God's word was indeed a blessing to my family. My daughter, who is just three and a half years old, learned to walk by holding on to these boxes. However, using the home as the office had its limitations and difficulties. And last year, in the year 2020, God gave us a rented space. As uh, the chairman mentioned about the Cornerstone magazine, and in the page number nine, in, in this month edition, you can see the two pictures of our resource center. God has enabled us to rent this place, to open this place, with uh, many resources, books and Bibles, wall hangings and everything. As we know that many, uh, many Christian bookstores are closing in and around the GTA. But God helped us to open the store to serve the Christian community, to procure these materials. And people can come and they can sit and read these materials and study and use for their spiritual growth. This is about the uh, Christian Resource Center. As you saw in these different pictures, kindly continue to pray uh, for us with these resources. May God help and use to many people who are in and around in Toronto and to, to procure God's word in their hands. As you prayed for the um, Ministry Toronto Bible Chapel, through our outreach activities in the month of August 2021, just three months before, God has helped and enabled us to start a community church in Scarborough. As you, as you can see, if you have this Cornerstone magazine, you can see my article there, and you can read and you can pray for this ministry, this Toronto Bible Chapel stands tucked away in the corner of a commercial plaza alongside with the numerous retail outlets, including, we you know, Medjana Supplies and the Hindu Temple. Our vision was from Acts chapter 13, verse 47. We know that there it is mentioned that I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. That was our vision, to bring light or to shine the light of salvation to the community which is lost without Jesus Christ. God has helped us. We rented a thousand square feet uh, uh, unit or a small building, and we are gathering there every week around 20 to 25 uh, believers, new believers, unbelievers are gathering there at Sunday morning 
at 10 a.m. we have the worship time. And at 11 a.m. we have the family Bible hour. After that, we have the Sunday school. In the weekdays also, we have the Bible study and the cottage meetings. Kindly, whenever you visit this place here in Scarborough or in GTA, if you have time, uh, please stop by any Sunday. Most welcome anybody who are coming to this area. Uh, Sunday, our worship meeting starts at uh, 10 a.m. And if you get this copy, Cornerstone Magazine, you can read about the, this church. More details are there. Uh, please read and pray for the activities and the Toronto Bible Chapel. That's about the literature ministry and um, uh, with the Toronto, about the church, Toronto Bible Chapel. And the one more ministry that we are doing um, in India, it is a school of evangelism. Uh, it is a one-year course subdivided into coursework and field work to equip men and women for evangelization. It was done by deploying workers to different local areas where my dad go to these areas and teach them like three months, uh, three months, they will teach the Bible and the next three months, they will go to the field for evangelization for a uh, field work. And again, next three months, they will back to the uh, school and they will study from the word of God. And again, after three months, they will go to the field and do the evangelization. It is like a one year course. So especially pray uh, for the school of evangelism. This is a picture that has happened in one of the villages in India. This is my dad who is taking classes uh, for the students. These are almost about the Salem Mercy missions. Uh, please continue uh, to pray for the, all the ministry activities and uh, that we remain Christ-centered uh, for getting uh, prayer partners, getting sponsors for all the projects, for getting the faithful workers for all the activities and especially pray for India, the persecuted church, Many in different places in India, they are not able to gather same like that we are gathering in our chapels here. Lot of persecutions. People are coming and uh, making different kinds of problems. But God is helping the people in India and the church in India. So especially pray in the coming days uh, for this ministry. And may God bless you all. And thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Uh, to share about the Salem Mercy Missions uh, to the dear believers at Broke you Bible Chapel. I convey my heartfelt thanks to all elders, deacons, and all believers for this opportunity. May God bless you all. Thank you. Five hundred and forty-eight.